Welcome to Fundraising Good Times. I'm your host, Pearl Davies Shaw, president of Saad and Shaw Comprehensive Fund Development Services. This week joining us, we have Shannon Dixon, founder of Shannon M.B. Dixon Consulting, and we're going to talk about working from home. We know that you're all into it and up to your eyeballs by now, but we have with us Shannon to share her experience. Shannon, welcome. Hey, Pearl. It's good to see you. Great. Thanks for joining us. I want to jump right in. I know you have a lot of experience on this topic, so just wanted this short communication. If you'd share your best practices, maybe talk a little bit about tools that you feel people should consider, and then we'll wrap up um, just with some of your thoughts, lessons learned. Sure. I think the most useful way for me to talk about this is from a leader standpoint. So if you're a leader and you have um, employees that are now at, your, at, at their own homes trying to get the work out, um, what do you need to be thinking about? And I've been thinking about this a lot lately. All, all of my clients are in this situation. And I've been thinking about the, the core competencies of leaders that really help them adapt to crisis situations. I've been thinking about self-reflection, mm. curiosity, and learning. So as a leader, you might be thinking right now, um, or not thinking, about how you have been operating with your employees. So, you know, if, if you were to take a few minutes and think about um, a situation that you had this week and think about how what you did cascaded down and made someone else feel or someone else do as far as a work product. So that's part of the self-reflection. Just spending a few minutes every week or every couple of days about what your actions um, have been and how some of them have been gut or how some of them have been intentional and how they've affected your, your employees. Um, so that really comes into that curiosity point. You know, are, are you curious about how you can do things differently? Are you curious about um, what's going on in your employee's life? Uh, and then the, the, the learning part is so, so good. You've got the curiosity, you're reflecting on what the situation is. And so now you go into some learning mode. And that might be you as a leader doing some research into different tools, as I think you'll probably ask me about, or different processes. Um, it might also be you as a leader sending off a, a smaller team of your employees to investigate a different process um, and then coming back with some recommendations. Great. I really like what you're saying that sometimes I feel we're locked into this Zoom world, but we forget we're people, we're humans, we're interactive, and then how it may not be so evident how our actions, words, or thoughts are impacting others. So I really like what you shared about remembering you are in a leader's seat and to just look and reflect. I think a, a lot of conversation I've seen has been focused on tools. What tools do you use? And um, I just thought you could maybe share some suggestions and we can list them below this video. But for people who are new to it, are there tools they should look at that could help them work together? Yeah, I think I'm betting that a lot of you are missing your water cooler conversations or your stop by the cubicle conversations. So there's definitely some tools that you can use to keep those conversations going. Um, there's a tool called Slack or just a, you know, just general instant message that you might set up for your team or on Microsoft Teams that, you know, there's like a team conversation component. And so something that gives your team members the ability to quickly check in with each other to keep um, the, the processes going and the momentum going and also just for some interpersonal sharing too. That kind of a tool is a really important work, work tool to integrate into your team. Great, great. And then I know everybody is using Zoom. Do um, you have any suggestions about that or has that kind of been talked about to death? Yeah, I think people have been talking about Zoom a lot, right? I think the thing that I've seen that is most distracting um, with Zoom is just people's inability to use some of the basic tools or, or lack of knowledge about those. So knowing when to mute yourself, have yourself on mute, um, having some good lighting so that people can really see your face and see how you are responding, um, using that chat um, 
tool down there on the bottom to um, give a quick notification to someone who's facilitating the meeting if they need to know something so you're not being too disruptive. Using the raise your hand function, which is under participants, if you need to be recognized, if you're in a meeting, you know, 30 people or so. Um, so yeah, there, there's some, some good tips for Zoom. I think the best tip I know is to keep it short. Keep those, keep those Zoom meetings short. Um, keep people engaged with a very intentional agenda. And um, you may have your team members have specific roles, like this team member is responsible for the note taking, this team member is responsible for adding some levity to the conversation. Um, uh, another tool is opening up the Zoom five minutes before the meeting starts so that people can kind of ch chit chat and catch up so then your meeting can be succinct. Oh, Shannon, these are great. These are great. I really appreciate you sharing these. On the topic of keeping it short, maybe let's wrap with two things you've learned over the past two months. What would you like to share with our listeners? Gosh, I think that um, people have just been running, you know, running to keep up with the situation and um, maybe a little reticent to add some tools that if, if they did, it would really help them. Mm. Um, so I've been thinking about these project management tools that can really help when you're also not in the office and talking to each other a lot. So using just like piloting on one project that you may be having going on right now, and there's a lot of probably new projects going on right now, so it would be a good opportunity. Using a project management tool like Asana or Monday, there's free versions of those to, you know, just really organize the project that you're doing, assign roles, allow a, a space for people to give updates. So to create some efficiency um, in the digital world for people to organize. And if you, if you do that on a project, um, that's going on right now, pilot it, you can see how you can expand it to the rest of your work and create some efficiencies. So I think that's number one thing. Number two thing is just self-care, you guys, you know, just give each other a break, um, you know, reach out with empathy, just a, a short, quick message to your colleague when you see them struggling with the kid running in and out or the dog or the husband coming down, um, you know, uh, just a little bit of empathy and adjusting to that, really checking in with people about where they are. And then if you're their supervisor or a coworker, okay, I hear where you are. What can we do to adjust things that will allow them to be manageable for you? Because at the end of the day, it's about all the work that we're doing. At the end of the day, it's about how it's affecting people out there. And, uh, we have to take care of ourselves. I used to work in disaster relief. So there's this thing about, you know, the, the, the helper can't help anybody else if you yourself is going down. So help yourself so you can keep your mission at your core and do your good work. Oh, Shannon, this is great. This is great. I appreciate it to our listeners. Thank you for your time. We hope you've enjoyed this conversation. Again, I'm Pearl Shaw with Saad and Shaw. And we've been in discussion with Shannon Dixon, founder of Shannon M.B. Dixon Consulting. We wish you all a fundraising good time.